Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Bill Indiana. Today I'm going to do a reboxing for the Oros Kickstarter version, and you can see by kind of hopefully you can see kind of the UV spot UV showing up on there. Uh, but anyway, as I've unboxed it and organized it and put all the pieces together into the insert that's provided for the Kickstarter edition, just wanted to show you how I organized it in case it might be a help to you. So if you're curious, stay tuned. All right, so I've got pretty much everything pulled out of the box. This is what's still in the box. We've got down in the bottom here the score pad, a couple of these little desiccant uh, tabs here just to keep things dry. Not really much that needs to go in this middle section. And then we've got our um, individual Automa cards. So here's for the blue, and then here's for the... Uh, Let's see, this is for the kind of purple-yellow combo. <laughs> and then here's for the red, and then here's for the green. And then we've got our big meeples here, our demigods to move up the ziggurat. They just fit into their pieces right there. So not much in the bottom section right there. And then uh, we've got our individual player containers. So here's how I've organized each one. So I've got the workers, the followers, right here in this section. And then we've got the, I think it's called the Mega Mountain or, or, or something like that, expansion um, that I've just got sitting right here on top where it fits. And then we've got the little, if you don't want to use the big chunky um, demigod, you can use a little round disc here. And then I've got, I went ahead and put these in, these little markers in with the mark, the little wooden markers. There's a lot of space there. And so I went ahead and put these punch out markers in here as well and they fit nicely in here. One thing I will mention is um, if you look at the different components here that fit in, it's pretty cool how they fit nicely, but there's also even just a little design. So I'll, I'll show you, I'll take everything out and put it back in for you here. So we've got the three levels of the buildings that we can put on the mountains. And I don't, I don't know if you can see in the bottom of that, but there's like an L shape and then a little square and then this little rectangle to kind of show you. So I found it's a little bit easier if you put the rectangles in first right here where the picture shows you they should go. Not that it makes a big difference. And then put the L shaped ones in next. Like that, and then the little squares just in the corner here. Although it does sometimes, they do sometimes flip over if you don't put them in one by one. But if you're not, if you don't care about that, it doesn't matter. But um, put those in there, and they fit pretty nicely down in there. And then the mega mountain there on top. And so I just did the same thing for each of the four colors, and then put the green one here, the yellow purple combo here, and the blue here. I just put each one above. It's Automa card. And then that, there's, they don't sit real flat, but they will once the board goes in because there's a little lip right here that fits the board. And so then if you take the board, it fits nicely right into this gap and kind of holds snugly in and also keeps these level so they're not kind of leaning at all. And then we've got the ziggurat chart, two sided, 21 point, 15 point, uh, that can just go right on top of there. And then now I've got the triple layer player boards. I've gone ahead and punched them and, re and assembled them. A couple quick comments as you do this. Um, I'll put the last one together here for you. You can kind of see there, there's only these, these little clips in the top corner. And on this one, they're not really actually wanting to stay real well. I may have to super glue those. And then you might be able to see here on the, on the bottom and they just don't really stay together. It'd be nice maybe if there's another one down here. I think it shouldn't, uh, maybe even, I don't know if, if we made this smaller and put another down here, but they are kind of curling up. I don't know if that's gonna impact the gameplay or not, but it's something I'm a little concerned about especially on this green when it seems to be most affected. And then I just discovered if you put these sort of in alternating um, with the tabs up and then the tabs down, they kind of lay more flat. And so here is the pieces and how you have to assemble that. So once you punch all the little pieces out, you're going to have the back side where the automa things are. You'll need to put that kind of face down. And then on the little thin board, the actual player board that has all the information, that's the automa side. So that goes there. And then this is the regular player board side. And then this gets all punched and put on. I will say when you punch, especially this front side, these are really be careful because it's easy to bend these. They're not, they're pretty thin, it's easy to bend them. And some of them, this one's came out pretty good, but some of them have like little tears on the back when I was trying to punch them out. So do be really careful when you punch those out. And then once you align them, oh, I forgot to 
poke out the little uh, circle there on that side on the uh, player board itself. All right. So then you can see the holes kind of align right here. And so then you'll take the piece and kind of push it through. Align everything and kind of push it through till you feel it coming flush on the other side. And then the other interlocking piece just goes in that way. And it looks like I do have one extra piece here, I guess, in case one gets damaged. So kind of push that through gently. And then the middle piece there. So, yeah, it looks like I do have one little extra one here in case one gets damaged. So I'll put that in a, let's put that with the volcanoes for now. So that's how it comes together. And this one's sitting fairly flat, but the, the bottom edges do just lift a bit. And I'm not sure if that's going to, again, if that's going to impact, you can kind of maybe see um, it flexes a little bit there. So we'll see if that affects the gameplay at all. Uh, cool design. I'm just wondering if that's if it's going to be an issue. And then in the trays, I've got, uh, these are the ones that are the initial player position ones that you put down. And so they've got <clears throat> a one with a white circle around it that's not filled in. And then these are the normal ones that have a filled in white circle. Oh, my voice is starting to go. Uh, and then twos, threes, fours, and then the mountains. And I just kind of divided them up evenly amongst the two different boxes. <clears throat> and same thing with the volcanoes, the ones, twos, threes, and fours, just kind of divided them up evenly amongst these trays. And then the rule book will fit right there on top and then the cool cover. So Oros is, in my opinion, just a really clever and unique game of tile placement, tile movement, basically game board manipulation, creating the game board or changing the game board as you go. So I'm really excited to play this again um, and hopefully I'll have a review and maybe even a solo playthrough in the future. Still waiting on my voice to come fully back to make these videos, but uh, struggle through this one. Hopefully it wasn't too bad for you. If you appreciated this video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up down below. If you have any questions for me, leave those questions down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana, signing off. Oh.